Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I'd say from this season, I've had some bad games. Um, but I wouldn't be playing every game for Manchester United in the starting eleven if I'd been playing bad every game or not, not playing well enough. There's a reason why both managers have put me in the starting eleven every game. Um, You'll remember that car crash of an interview from Harry Maguire that happened to be released on the exact same day that Manchester United got absolutely steamrolled 4-0 by Liverpool. Only a couple of weeks after we got steamrolled by Man City. And Harry Maguire, Captain Harry Maguire, is now at the centre of another, I wouldn't call it a controversy, but he's back in, firmly back in the spotlight, a fierce spotlight for all the wrong reasons after an article was released from Mark Ogden at ESPN. And I'm going to run through that article. I'm going to run through what was said in that article. I'm going to discuss Harry Maguire in a bit more detail because we have to talk about, I'll reiterate this word, Captain Harry Maguire. Again. I did it a few times last season. Doing it again now. As I said, this is coming off the back of this article from Mark Ogden from ESPN. Entitled, Can Harry Maguire Rescue His England World Cup Hopes in Career-Defining Week? And there's one particular part of this article which has really caused a bit of a storm. And this is quoting so sources, sources, what, quoting sources close to Maguire. Not Maguire himself saying this, so that's a, a caveat that I want to add to this. This is coming from Mark Ogden and whoever his sources are. It's very, very particular, so it'll be a strange thing to make up. That's what I would say anyway. Let me run through this. Has Ten Hag identified the problem and dealt with it by dropping Maguire? Favoring a defensive partnership of Varane and Martinez, or is Maguire simply a victim of circumstance? Harry needs pace around him, but he hasn't had that. A source close to Maguire told ESPN. If you put Man City's Ruben Diaz in the United defence and Harry in the City back four, Diaz would struggle and Harry would thrive. Harry hasn't had a good 12 months, but he hasn't been helped by those around him, coaches or players. So it's inevitable that his confidence and form have suffered. Sources have said that Maguire's frustrations with goalkeeper David De Gea's communication and reluctance to defend further away from his goal line were also a factor in the overall malaise in defence last season. And there's so much to, to try and absorb in that. I don't know where you start. But it feels a bit like this again, doesn't it? Remember when Harry Maguire was in absolutely... Pony form for Manchester United went and scored a what was it, a header he scored for England, whipped out the cup deer celebration, saying, "Yeah, can't hear you now, haters. Can't hear you now." That the staggering, staggering lack of self awareness in that celebration really irked United fans. Really irked Roy Keane, and it's stuck in my head. And me reading through this, there is a ton of finger pointing. You're at fault. You're at fault. That's not right. That's not right. It's got nothing to do with me. But you're at fault and everybody else apart from me is the problem. That's what that screams out to me. And there's a reason that these two have brought in a new energy, a new belief and a new confidence in this United team because they're fucking better. <laughs> there's no need to sort of like paint it any other, any other way. I said it, but I'll be very surprised if Harry Maguire thrived under Eric Ten Hag's hired line system. In the same way that I think Cristiano Ronaldo could probably go find a team elsewhere and probably be pretty damn decent and score plenty of goals. He won't really, I don't think, do that in this Manchester United setup, even though I backed him to be a high scorer this season. But this from Maguire is... It's really strange. And to sort of... Um, look, while I think there are some fair frustrations with the idea that David De Gea's communication isn't good enough and he's sort of got reluctance to walk away from his... Um, from his goal line, but that bit down there. Martinez's arrival from Ajax and his ability to communicate and interact with David De Gea in Spanish. Here's an interview with David De Gea. Well, it's not, not much much to say. Speaking I think it was embarrassing, English. to be honest. Uh, not Spanish? See I mean, what the hell? Like, imagine, trying to, imagine trying to use that as a reason. Honestly, it's, um, it's brought Maguire back into the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Now... I've tried to be a little bit careful with how I've titled this video and, and how I'm going to try and discuss in this video because this has come from Mark Holton and it's coming from sources close to Maguire. This isn't coming from the horse's mouth in the same way that this interview did. Remember that interview I showed at the start? That was from the horse's mouth and that you can really sort of speak out against. 
but it's just really odd timing. It's really, really strange. This is coming out, especially after these two have established themselves now so perfectly inside this Ten Hag system. And it makes me think, honestly, what the hell would Eric Ten Hag be thinking about this now? What's his reaction to this? Because remember that Eric Ten Hag, he came into the club and what did he do back in July? Got some criticism for it as well. He backed Harry Maguire. July the 11th, that was released. Came in and said, look, Harry Maguire's my captain. He's in my team. What happened? He started Harry Maguire against Brighton. What happened? We lost 2-1. He started Harry Maguire against Brentford. We lost 4-0. What happened? Harry Maguire got dropped and Manchester United went on to win four games in a row in the Premier League. Now, you might believe in coincidences. I don't particularly think that's much of a coincidence. And the thing here that I that doesn't really sit right with me is this concept of sort of finger pointing, of, of blaming everybody else, of sort of, I suppose, throwing everyone else under the bus. Because you'll remember this. This was an interview with Solskjaer straight after a game. I'm not sure which game, which game it was. But Solskjaer got absolutely blindsided here by Maguire. What is a worry as a manager when you hear your players saying that, that they lacked belief, particularly when you've got players like Cristiano Ronaldo in your side? I know we've spoken about psychology before. Have they, have they said they lack belief? So um, Maguire just <laughs> yeah. said that he felt like in the second half, the team or certain players lacked the belief that they could do it. I know psychology is important. At Solskjaer trying to think, well, fuck, I didn't see that coming. What am I supposed to say to that? And I don't really know what Ten, well, I know what Ten Hag is going to do. Like Harry Maguire has correctly, rightly been put on the bench in favour of these two starting and just bringing a a new quality and a new assurance to a defence which has just been a leaky cauldron. Eh, Harry Potter reference. For so long. Didn't even mean that Harry Potter reference. Not Harry Potter. Anyway, back to the story. Martinez has been an absolute monster. Sort of the, the leader and the, the, the dogged approach. But match with quality. On and off the ball. And, and Varane's starting to look like Champions League Varane. And this has come because Eric Ten Hag said, look, you know what? It doesn't matter if you're the captain. And he said that. Doesn't matter if you're a captain, you're not guaranteed to start. And he's shown that. Maguire, bench, Ronaldo, bench, Shaw, bench. Boom, four wins in a row in the Premier League. Maguire, come back in for Sociedad. All your, all your fringe players, come back in for Sociedad at home. Show me what you can do. Ah, fuck you. 1-0 defeat. Ah, well, you, you go back out. 2-0 winners away at Sheriff. And I guarantee you none of them start. You won't see Maguire near that starting them against City or Ronaldo or Shaw. And nor should you, given the form of the other players. But this Eric Ten Hag... It, this is the bit that's sort of striking me. Eric Ten Hag tried his best with Maguire, backed him, played him, played him, and then dropped him correctly. And now we've seen the turnaround in form. And now we're getting this story about how it's everyone else's fault, how it's not Maguire's fault. I do think Maguire would be a better centre-back at, at City because City's got a, 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 a complete system that he could just drop into. And I think it's a big reason why the likes of Maguire and Pogba and Di Maria and so many other players at United that we've signed over the last 10 years haven't really thrived because we haven't had the best of systems. Now, the thing I want to say about this here is the fact that this is coming from a source close to Maguire. And because it's so specific, I'm going to have to give um, Mark Holden the benefit of doubt that I'm going to have to trust this. I'm not going to have to trust this source, but if his source is correct, then it feels a bit like this. Jesse Lingard's brother, you can go back to Ravel Morrison. There's been different examples of it as well, but players at Manchester United that haven't been surrounded by the right voices. And for me, that huge lack of self-awareness that Harry Maguire showed in that interview before we got pumped 4-0 by Liverpool, saying that I must be doing something right. No manager's dropping me. In the same way that I felt that this celebration was a drastic lack of self-awareness from a player who did deserve the criticism. And Harry, man, you've got to remember... You are wearing the captain's armband at Manchester United. You are going to be held accountable to a different level and a different standard. I don't think he's ever truly appreciated that. He's like, it wasn't my fault about the 80 million price tag. Right? It's not my fault. Well, you're wearing the fucking armband. You've got to do more. You have to be more. Anthony didn't ask for this price tag of 85 million, but it's happened. He's not going to use that as an excuse, is he? And I just think at this point now, like, properly, a uh, penny for Eric Ten Hag's thoughts. I imagine he's going to have the same sort of reaction to that photo there from Roy King. Just like, really? That's my reaction. I'm looking at this, this whole story going, really? Are we? Oh, we are. Okay. And I think the only thing that Eric Ten Hag can do in this situation is do exactly what he has been doing. 
Leave Maguire on the bench. Hell, take the captain's armband away from him. I said that last season, and I will stand by that. I think I think Harry Maguire is one of the first names on the on the sell list in the summer. I think he can go on to probably. It strikes me as Juventus would be a good club for him. Serie A would be the pace that suits Harry Maguire, uh, and I think he would thrive in that environment. He's not going to thrive in in the system at Manchester United, and for want of building this community inside this team spirit, can't have shit like this coming out. Now, I don't know whether this is just uh, Mark Ogden stretching the truth as a journalist or whether this is complete and utter from the horse's mouth from a source close to Maguire. But let's see what the reaction of the fallout is. That's my sort of thoughts on this whole situation. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But uh, Maguire should be on the bench. He's been backed by the manager as captain. He didn't perform in Brighton or Brentford. And now we've won four in a row. We shouldn't be talking about Maguire coming back into the team. We shouldn't be talking about Maguire blaming other people. Maguire, man, look inwards. And as I said, the examples of this, the examples of that, show me that I think Maguire struggles with that self-awareness of his own problems and things that are his fault, nobody else's.